Hello everyone, hello, hello, and welcome to Priya Shokos. If you guys can see and hear me, just type a yes if you are here to learn about the goal guidance for COPD. Type a yes, we'll see, to see, Simran, Haifa, Mia, Bilal, Aman, Kareem, Hamza, Amna, the best trainee pharmacist ever. I love that name, I love that name. I love how you've given yourself that name, but you got the name, you got to own it now. Sir Gillespie, how are you? Go so nicely on here again. Ali, how are you? Fantastic, work well. Manjot in the house. How is everyone doing? Ahmed K, I am doing well, my friend. How are you doing? How are you doing? It's been a long time. It's been a long, long time. Fired up or excited for a webinar that is long overdue. How is everyone feeling? Everyone's got the exam in almost four weeks' time. How is everyone feeling? Nervous? Good. Hanji, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Excited. Excited is the word that I'm looking for. Remember, you've done all those exams. This is just one more. Excited. You smash through this, and then afterwards, you smash that GPHC exam, and then you are going to be a pharmacist. And then afterwards, in July and then August, you're going to party, and then you get a GPHC number, something that looks like this, 222 something, 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 and that's your seven-digit number, and that will be yours forever. And that is very, very exciting. Woo! It has been a very, very long time. It really has. But there's lots coming. There's a month to go for the exam. And you know what we do at Pretty Show Office? We're always pitching in, always there for you. So I mentioned today that we've got a new 30 question series of calls on YouTube. I'm not sure if anyone's seen that yet or if anyone's had a chance. But we've got this webinar tonight as well. We've got, for anyone on the course, we've got the Q&A session on the Telegram group. So everything is amazing. Everything is going great. The year has absolutely flown by and we are buzzing for June and we're buzzing for July and then we can all party afterwards. Good stuff. So guys, if you are here and you're not sure about gold guidance for COPD and you're struggling with it and you see questions and you think, I don't know what to do. Just type a one, just type a one if that's you. Just type a one, same run, host now, if you are here to learn the easy way, because that is what we do here. Mariam, Sidra, Bilal, fantastic, fantastic. Good stuff, guys. So for those of you that don't know me, uh, I recognize a lot of names from Combo Course, so most of you will know who I am. But for those of you who don't know me, my name is Umar Majid. I'm the Managing Director, Co-Founder and Calculations Lead of Pre Shortcut. I'm saying calculations, but for those of you on the combo course, we'd also know that I also do the respiratory chapter. Who loves my respiratory chapter, by the way? If you do, just type a three. Just type a three if you love those slides, those color coded slides. Fantastic, loving it. So I also do respiratory. That is what I'm good at with the clinical. And I'm glad to hear that it was really easy to understand. So those amazing slides, I realized that the goal guidance was missing. And then they've started to ask more and more questions. So it's only right. We do a session and make sure everything is clear and that you go into the exam with full confidence. And when the questions do come up, you look back and you think, boom, we were on the webinar session. I know this. I'm going to get these marks and smash the exam. Really simplify the difference in BTS and NICE. I love it, Tosi. I love it. Good stuff. So, guys, uh, I'm manager at the co-founder calculations lead. I've lived in this court and will have moved around all over the place. So I have a lot of community counties everywhere. I went to the university. I went to the University of Bradford. Anyone from Bradford, guys, just give me a two. Just give me a two. The best uni there is. I miss those days, but life is a lot more exciting now. Definitely. I used to work as a COVID vaccination lead. I also do a lot of charity work, and then I'm admin of the Farmers Cooperative as well. DM you always now. Nah, it's all about Bradford. Habib is with me on this one. Fantastic, guys. Today is a bit of an introduction, and then we will go through my slides with the gold. COPD guidance and then at the end as well as always we have lots of freebies that we give away so who loves freebies if you do just type on me just type on me just type on me so we're gonna have a raffle at the end as well if you're on the combo course and your name pops up I'll sort it you'll get your money back so it's a free combo course basically if you're not on the combo course then what's going to happen is I'll just give you free access until the June exam so does that sound like a plan guys everyone knows the plan for today if you do just type a yes yes Sarah, nicole yes manjot yes you enter if you turn up and you stay at the end you have entered you just have to stay at the end you just have to stay till the very very end nice one i like it i like it 
Good stuff, guys. So who is ready to begin? If you are, just give me a three. Just give me a three. Just give me a three. We have goal guidelines, 2023 updates. I'm kind of happy that I didn't do this last year because last year was a bit complicated. They've changed a little bit around this year and they've updated it. And they've made it much, much easier to understand, which is really, really good for everyone. The table makes no sense. To see, it makes a lot of sense. I will break it down for you, just like I did with the stepwise treatment for asthma as well. I promise you, you walk away today and you think, do you know what? I got this. I, I, I'm going to smash this in the exam. Maria, how are you? We met the CPC. So this could be an exam. It's starting to pop up more and more. See, what the GPC now likes to do is it like to put in questions where you have to use resources. And for anyone here that did the November exam in, in November 2022 and in possibly June last year as well, they will say that there were questions. Anyone here from November 2022 that did the exam and can confirm that was on the and that was on the exam paper. So you'll get a question or two, but it's definitely starting to pop up more and more. So it is definitely starting to pop up more and more. So We'll go through everything. We'll make sure everyone's clear. And then I promise you, we'll break it down. And then everyone will walk away confident. They know everything about respiratory and they're going to smash the exam. The November exam was difficult. If it's easy, there's no point, is there? It's only worth it if it's difficult. Go stuff, guys. So, guys, let's start the webinar. What does COPD stand for? Any of you on the combo course, you can't let me down now, guys. Come on. What does COPD stand for? Chronic obstructive, chronic. My writing is tragic. This is what happens to you when you work in pharmacy and also uh, with Marvin. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which covers quite a few diseases. Looks like the, <laughs> looks like the mouse that you see. My writing is not great. I blame my left-handedness. So diagnosing COPD, guys, we'll talk about the symptoms. Symptoms are dyspnea, which is shortness of breath, recurrent wheezing, chronic cough. So a chronic cough, something that lasts for more than eight weeks or longer. You also, with COPD, the main difference to COPD and asthma is that COPD, you tend to get a lot more infections, like lower respiratory tract infections. How many of you see amoxicillin and doxycycline and prednisolone prescribed for the same patients that work? If you do type a yes. So that's the difference between COPD and asthma. With asthma patients, you don't really tend to see that much, but with COPD patients, you tend to see a lot more of them. COPD patients also have a history such as smoking, or they've been exposed to smoke in the past or dust or fumes. And the COPD is used by, by is diagnosed by using a spirometer. Can anyone tell me what a spirometer is? If you're not sure what a spirometer is, just type a zero. Just type a zero if you don't know what a spirometer is. A spirometer is a very important device, and it is used to diagnose COPD, and it is used to check lung function, and it is used and it measures the amount of air you can breathe out in one second and how much you can breathe out in one false breath as well. The best training pharmacist ever. You don't need to be here. You smashed the exam already. Free pass, free pass. Fantastic, fantastic. For those of you that put zero, that's okay. That's what we're here for. Let's go through everything and let's smash this together. Who's ready, guys? Let's type a one, just type a one, let's type a one if you are ready to smash this. I'm loving it. That's a brief example of a pyrometer. I honestly got the first picture from Google and stuck it in. So a spirometer is used to diagnose D-O-P-D. So how many of you have seen this and you just think, I give up. I don't know what to do with this. If that's you, just type of me, just type of me, just type of me, me. No, 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 no. It's a lot going on, but promise me, I trust you. Trust me that if you break it into little chunks, it will be so much better. Now, the most important thing is to understand these terms. So you could FEV1, FEC, MMRC, CAT and then EOCE, COPD. You work through this part first and then this part afterwards and then one, two, three, and then they're either in A, B or E. But that's what today's webinar is all about. We'll go through it, break it down nice and simple 
and then we'll talk about treatment as well. Who's ready to move on? If you are, just give me a three, just give me a three, just give me a three. We're gonna cover all this, we're gonna cover everything on this slide. What in the exam, what did they ask that was it using the diagram? Someone from November 2022 could confirm that with the with the with the with the exams. So measurements you guys need to know. The first one is FEV1, and then it's MMRC, and then it's a COPD assessment test, and then it's ECOPD. So what you have to do is you have to get one, two, three, four. You have to get those figures, use those figures, and then categorize patients in group A, B, or E, and then use that to then place patients and give them the right treatment. So understanding these four first is very important to be able to answer those questions. So who is ready for this? If you are, just type a three, just type a three, just type a three because COPD is part of respiratory. So I promise you, once you understand what those four things are about, so FEV1 and FEC ratio, MRC, CAT, and then ECOPD, once you understand what those four things are about, then that will make things a lot easier for you to understand in the exam. So let's do this. So guys, starting off with this, what happens is you get a spirometer, right? And then patients are given like a dose of salbutamol. And then what patients have to do is they have to breathe into the machine. So the machine measures two things. It measures FEV1, which we discussed before. So it measures how much you can breathe out. Let me get a highlighter. So it measures, so you breathe into the machine, it gives you a graph like this. Then the machine will give you your FEV1. Why is it not working? It'll give you your FEV1, and then it'll give you how much you breathe out in one second as well. So can, can everyone see this graph down here, A? If you can, just type A. Just type in A, just type in A, just type in A, fantastic. So this is what happens. So your volume is, uh, your, your breath is, is measured in liters. So what you do when you breathe in here, that's one second. So that is your FEV1. And then the highest point of your breath, that's the most that you can breathe out. So that is your FVC. So pretty much what you do is you get the FEV1, you divide it by the FVC, and then you get the FE1 FVC ratio. That's pretty much it. That is honestly it. If that's clear so far, guys, just type a three, just type a three, just type a three. Fantastic. So they don't do a baseline compared to and with and with and without the salbutamol. What they do is they get the test and they compare it to patients with normal test results. So it depends on the patient's age, height, their gender, and their race as well. And then they compare that and then they use that to make it work and then calculate the ratio. Fantastic, and you say that last part again. So when you breathe into the machine, you breathe in after one second, that is your FEV1. So it's how much you can breathe out in one second. Is anyone with me so far? If you are, just type a one, just type a one, just type a one. So you breathe into the machine after one second, that is your FEV1. Afterwards, when you carry on breathing into the machine, you'll get to a point where you can't breathe anymore because you've like exhaled out as much as you can. So that's the point where you have your FVC. So your FEV1 is after one second, your FVC is the most amount of liters that you can breathe out. So that's the highest point. So if you have a look at this little chart here, this little graph here, so that's the highest point. So it's five liters for that one. So FVC is one breath. It's the most amount of liters breathed breathe out in one breath. Fantastic. I think that's a bit clearer now. If it is, just type a three, just type a three, just type a three. Good stuff. Fantastic. I saw a question earlier. It was saying like, if to give the patient salbutamol, won't that fix their issues? It will a little bit, but if a patient has COPD, it won't make that much of a difference. So then when the test results show it's COPD, then you know that it is actually COPD, if that makes sense. 
good stuff. So guys, you get the FEV1 and the FVC. So for instance, in this equation, you have four liters and then the FVC is five liters. All you have to do, let me get a pen for this one, is four divided by five and then your ratio is 0 0.8. We've got a little exercise on that later on, and then that'll become a little bit clearer as well. But that is pretty much it, guys. That is how you measure FEV1, FVC ratio. Is that now a little bit clearer? If that's clearer than what it was half an hour ago, just type a three, just type a three, just type a three, fantastic. I had a quick question, something to do with why our patients given salbutamol that balances out the test results and everyone's had a dose of something so it's a bit clearer now the main thing that you have to remember from all this is that if a patient's fev1 fvc ratio is under 0.7 then that means they have copd so if it's under 0.7 they have copd so how much, guys? 0 0.1, 0 0.2, type it in for me. 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. That is what you need to do and what you need to remember going into that exam. So 0 0.7 is the ratio. So if, this, if their ratio is under 0 0.7, and that confirms COPD. Do we need to memorize this or will it be provided in the exam? It's good to know because if you understand the theory, you'll be able to answer the questions that follow and then you'll be able to understand it as well. Fantastic, guys. So, guys, is FEV1 a bit clearer? Can we move on? If you can, just give me a three, just give me a three, just give me a three. I am loving the energy tonight. How do you guys do it? You go to work all day, you come back, you come back at six and it's seven, you barely eat your dinner, you barely have a rest, and then you're on a webinar again. I don't know how you do it. I just, I don't know how you do it. A lot of Pepsi, a lot, I, we are warriors. I like it, I like it. <laughs> we get to see you. I know that too, I feel sorry for you. you like, you come back from work, you don't get a chance to any gossip with me for an hour. Jesus, sweat, honestly. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. I love it, I love it. Good stuff, guys. So uh, previous slides, this is the same thing, really. The graph's a bit bigger. If the ratio is under 0.7, it is COPD. <laughs> Looking forward to the food myself, to be honest. Uh, yeah, love it, guys. Love it, love it. Never change, always good. So, guys, what happens is you get something like this. So, what happens after a patient has the test, they get placed into a category. So, it's gold one, two, three, and four. If everyone can see that on the slides, just give me a four. Just type a four, guys. Just type a four, just type a four, just type a four. Loving it. So what happens is you get something like that. And then if patients have the ratio under 0 0.7, they then get placed into the category. No, you don't need to memorize that. That will be given to you in the exam. They're testing your skill to use a resource. So if they're not giving you the resource, they're not testing the resource, are they? They're testing nonsense. They will give, you, they will give that to you in the exam, definitely. So if the ratio is under 0 0.7, then that means the OPD. And then they, they normally tell you as well, uh, like their predicted FEV. So you have to place them in the right category. Normally patients aren't in the mild category. They're normally in the moderate or the severe or the very severe because of how the OPD works. So you then have to get the ratio and then place them in the gold category. Seventy percent predicted. Does that mean baseline is the same as before as calc? Does that mean baseline is the same as calculating the ratio? I'm not sure what you mean by that. But what I do know is that and if all the patients, all, all the oh, sorry, I've gone thing back there. So all that means is. Any patient placed in these four categories, they'll have an FEV1 ratio of 0.7 or well under 
So let's talk a little bit about the 80%. That's a very good question. Sorry, my chat's in the way. It's really hard to see sometimes. Let's have a look. Fantastic. They'll tell you the predictor. That's exactly the answer that I was looking for. Fantastic. That's it. So you can't be expected to know someone's FEV. You can't be expected to know someone's FEV or the FEV when it's predicted off by heart. They will give that to you. So they will give you their table or they'll give you the figures and you have to work it out. So it's FEV1 divided by the FVC, and then that will give you the ratio. And that's pretty much it. The predicted, they will give you in the exam. They will give the predicted to you in the exam. You can't be expected to know that because that's dependent on age. It's dependent on high. It's dependent on the agenda and it's dependent on the race as well because we're all different. So everyone's is predicted will be a bit different as well. Do we have example questions? Maria, you're part of the Corbo course. Why would we not have example questions? Later on, my friend, later on, I promise you, stick around. It's all worth it. It's all worth it. So guys, FEV1, is that a bit clearer? If it is, just type a two. Just type a two, just type a two. Let's move forward on to the next slide. Guys, I keep getting messages about recording. I mentioned it on the Telegram group. I've had about 20 of us uh, messaging me today. Is it recorded? And then I've had emails and it's just, yes, it's, it's recorded, guys. It's recorded. It's recorded. But stick around till the end. You'll get a chance to be in the raffle and you get to win a combo course for free. Literally giving you free stuff, guys. This never happens. Can we control F resources? Yes, you can. Control F everything you like. Obviously, not, don't spend too much time on it. Otherwise, you won't ask you any questions. But yes, you can control F stuff as well. Loving it. Summary so far, your FEV1, FVC ratio is vital, so you need to know what it is. So I've explained that to yourselves. Your FEV1 is how much after breathing, after one second, your FVC is your maximum amount. So FEV1 divided by the FVC. If it's under 0.7, it's COPD. They will give you predicted, and then you have to place a patient into the right category. Loving it. I love that it was my goal for today's session of Saruman. So that I am very, very happy. I am very, very happy. So guys, we've covered FEV1, FVC ratio. Let's talk about MMRC. So, so far, what we've learned together is that this is pretty much all we've done. So we've done that part. And then we've talked a little bit about here as well. So we have learned everything inside that red box. So who's ready to learn about MMRC and CAT and exacerbations? If you are, type of me. You guys are on it tonight. You're on it. You're scared for. There's no point in being scared. Let's talk about MMRC. So MMRC basically stands for Modified, uh, Modified Medical Research Council. So that's pretty much what it is. And then the patients and the healthcare, the healthcare professional, they pretty much work together. And then patients are placed into, into a certain category. So grade zero is I only get breathless when a strenuous exercise. I mean, everyone gets breathless with strenuous exercise. You run up a hill for like an hour, you're gonna get, you're gonna get breathless. So that is grade zero. Whereas grade four on the other instance, that patient is saying that they're too breathless to leave the house or they even get out of breath when they even let dressing go on dressing. So they're just out of breath all the time. So that is great for. And guys, that's, that's pretty much all it is. That's pretty much all it is. It's a scale that measures breathlessness and patients are placed between grade zero and grade four. Is that a bit easy now, guys? If it is, just give me a four, just give me a four. Let's type a four. That's it, guys. That's it. Measures breathlessness, scale zero to four. Measure breathlessness, scale zero to four. Will we need to remember the grades and what they are? No, no, no. They'll give this to you in the exam. You're not supposed to know that. You're not a, you're not a respiratory specialist here. You're a trainee pharmacist. You're going to be a pharmacist soon and hopefully a very, very good one. But you're not. You're not a respiratory specialist, not just yet anyway. There might be one day where you know that off by heart because that's where you might end up in your career, but that's not today. Even I don't know that. Who's got time for that? So they'll give that to you in the exam. Guys, that is, that's AMRC. I honestly don't know what else to say. It really is as simple as that. 
Can we move forward on to CAT? If you can, just give me a three. Give me a three. Just give me a three. I am loving tonight's energy. To summary so far, guys, we have learned about this. And we've learned about MMRC. Why is my face in the way for? There we go. So we've learned about MMRC. We've learned about this part. Can everyone see that it's now starting to take shape a little bit? If you can, give me a three, give me a three, give me a three. So everyone can start to see that we are now starting to give shit. So now it's now starting to take shape. Do you need to know the different grades or it's given? It's given, 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 given. It's all given in the exam. Fantastic. Good stuff. So let's talk about MMRC. MMRC we discussed. So let's go on to CAT which stands for COPD assessment test. Pretty much what it is, is a questionnaire. You fill it in, you get a score. Your zero score means that you're happy, and then your five score means that you're very, very sad, and that you suffer, and not all not suffer, but have the symptoms of the description a lot. So for example, like the top line, For example, the top line, I never cough. So if you never cough, you just put down zero. Whereas if you cough all the time, then you put down a five. Is that clear so far, guys? If it is, just give me a zero. Just give me a zero. Just give me a zero because I don't cough. So I will put down zero. So zero, 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 zero. That's pretty much all it is, guys. That is all it is. You go through the questionnaire, phlegm, chest doesn't feel tight. Walking up a hill, not limited activities, confident even in the house, I sleep soundly, I have lots of energy. So these questions for a lot of us, uh, so these questions for a lot of us uh, are happily going to be zero, one or two, depending on where we are. But for people with COPD, they're going to answer threes and fours and fives. So based on the scale, if you put down zero for all of them, then your score is zero. So your lowest possible score is zero. Whereas it's eight questions, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you put down five for each one, so that's your five for all the, then you get a maximum of 40 because five times eight is 40. So your lowest score is zero and your high score is 40. If that's clear, guys, everything easy so far, just give me a 40, just give me a 40, just give me a 40. I had a question about depression and comorbidities. The questionnaire, the questionnaire is independent. So patients fill it in and then the result is taken from that. So this is what they have. They don't think about anything else. It's the FEV1, FEC ratio, it's AMRC and it's this questionnaire and then ECOPD as well. But we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Good stuff, guys. So remember the thing that I showed you a few slides ago, this. So this is what happens, guys. You've got your ratio, you've got your group, you've got your AMRC, and you've got your CAT. So if someone's uh, CAT is under 10, they're going to be in either group A or group E. Now, if someone has a CAT of 10 or more, then they're going to be in group B, or group E. Is that now a little bit clearer than what it was before, guys? If it is, type of three, type of three, type of three, I'm loving it, fantastic, fantastic. If you give me threes, I know that it becomes so much clearer. So that is pretty much it. So if your CAT is more than 10, you're gonna be, so if you're, say, you're, say so, so let's do a quiz for instance. My MRC is zero and my CAT is five, and actually, and I haven't had any exacerbations. Oh, what group am I? Am I group A, B, or E? I am A. I've got some A's or E's here, but we'll talk about exacerbations in the next slide. So as before, if my CAT is 10 or more, I'm going to be in group B or group E. And if my cat is less than 10, then I'm going to be in group A or group E not group B. It's fantastic. 
Good stuff, guys. That is CAT done. Shall we talk about ECOPD, which is exacerbations of COPD? If we can, just type a four, just type a four, just type a four. Lots of fours, lots of fours. Loving it. So this talks about exacerbations of COPD. It talks about how many exacerbations patients have per year. So what it means is that if a patient has, why is my chat? My chat's in the way, guys. It's a bit annoying. Let's move it out of the way. Sorry, guys. I'll come back to you. So if a patient has exacerbation history, which is here, if they have two or more exacerbations in a year, or they have one where they end up in hospital, then they get placed in category E. If that's now a little bit clearer, guys, just type a four, just type a four, just type a four. So you just follow the resources that you have in the question, and then you place patients in the correct category, and then you group them accordingly. So let's have a look. So let's have a look at some questions. So I think that's a little bit clearer now. Fantastic. All right. So I think I have some questions here about low MMRC and a high cat. So that's not going to happen. The reason why that won't happen or it's very unlikely to happen is because uh, an MMRC is based on breathlessness. So they can't put down that they're very out of breath here and then afterwards say that they're not really out of breath and they don't cough there. So that doesn't make much sense. So you won't really have a low MMRC and a high cut or a high MMRC or a low CAT, that doesn't make any sense. If they do, then they won't test you that on the exam because they're testing your day one pharmacist knowledge. If that, if that ever, that's not going to happen, but if that ever was to happen, that's the job for a specialist. Fantastic. A oh, ceremony, there's no point in me doing this. I love it, I love it, I love it. So this is really good stuff. Let's move forward a little bit, but yeah, it won't really overlap. And the GPC won't give you a question where it overlaps because then it becomes very ambiguous. What do you put? Do you put A? Do you put B? Do you put C? Do you put, well, do you put E? Like you can't choose an option then because everyone's going to give different options. They'll make it clear that the patient will either be in group A, B, or E. And that's it. Good stuff. Is that now a bit clearer, guys, from before? Just be A, just type of four, just type of four, just type of four. Lots of fours, lots of fours. I'm loving it, I'm loving it, I'm loving it. I love that this is making things a little bit clearer. So ECOPD, talk about exacerbations. If they've had two exacerbations or one where they've ended up in hospital, or if they just get zero or one exacerbations a year and they don't go to hospital, then the A or B. But if they get two or more, then they're in group E. If they get two exacerbations a year, they will definitely have an AMRC that's two or more, and they'll have a cat that's 10 or more. They, could, they wouldn't be in hospital otherwise with their symptoms, if that makes sense. If that makes sense, guys, just type a four, just type a four, just type a four. Fantastic. So they will give you the GPC. They will give you figures that fit that. Otherwise, they can't ask that question because then you can't put anything. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Loving it. So you got a type of one, if this is easy to understand, yeah. So we have talked about FEV1. I'm getting questions still, but we covered it in a lot of detail. Please just watch the replay. I promise it'll be easy to understand. We talked about FEV1, and we talked about how every patient has a predicted CO, uh, how, how they have a predicted FEV, and how they'll give that to you in the exam. We talked about MMRC and how it is a test for breathlessness. We've talked about CAT as well, how it's a test for patients and the quality of life. We've talked about ECOPD and their exacerbations history. You get all that information, patients either end up in A, B, or E. Is that simple now, guys? If it is, just give me a three. We've got three letters on there, A, B, or E, and that is it. That is it, guys. That is all there is to it. And get on with the question. Let's see.
just to check, will we be given the goal assessment tool? You just need to interpret the data. Yes, definitely. You're not supposed to know this, guys. I don't know this. And I teach the respiratory for the combo course. You're not supposed to know that off by heart. To be fair, I probably might know that off by heart, but you don't need to know that off by heart. I need to know it off by heart because I'm teaching it. So I actually have to know it, but you don't need to know that, guys. They'll give that to you in the exam. Promise you, they'll give that to you in the exam. The group's gone crazy, guys. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Good stuff. So let's have a little bit of a recap and summarize what we discussed. So we have a spirometer. We have a spirometer that gives an FEV1, FVC reading. If it's under 0.7, the patient's got COPD. You then get the FEV1, FVC, they get put into a gold category. You then get the AMRC, that's based on breathlessness. You get the CAT, which is a COPD assessment tool. You find out how many exacerbations they've had. You get all that, and then you put them in A, B, or E. Now, once you put them in A, B, or E, this is the most important part. So this part here, the treatment for the patient is based on which group they're in. So A, B, or E, which if you're an A or B or E, they have different inhalers. And that is the inhaler that you're given based on the group. Is that clear, guys? If it is, just give me a three. Just give me a three. Just give me a three. If it's under 0.7, if it's under 0.7, then only car and, M and only car and MRC. Yeah, you the gold category is the gold category, and they just you get they get put into that group basically. It's just a category, but obviously MRC and CAT are definitely a lot more important because you need that for the table. Fantastic for the gold for the gold grade. Do we use FEV one or the FVC ratio? You use the FEV1 FVC ratio, confirm that it's under 0 0.7 to confirm COPD, and then they will give you the predicted FEV1 in the exam. You can't not put it at FEV1 off by heart, and then you place it in gold one, two, three, or four. So, patient is placed into a category A, B, or E, and then you work out and then you recommend the treatment. And we have to do the ratio that I calculate. Yeah, you, you will. But honestly, it's going to be FEV1 is 4, and then the FVC is 5, and then it's 0 0.8, which is more than 0 0.7. Good stuff. Uh, each group. So which one uses more, uh, gold or nice? Um, I would say probably nice guidance, to be honest. But this is another guidance that they will test in the exam. So you have to be aware of it. Good stuff, guys. So let's talk a little bit about FEC. I'm actually going to start drawing some random lines on the graph. You've got to calculate what the FEV1 FVC ratio is. Are we ready, guys? Are we ready? If you are, just give me a one. 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 I'm loving it. Fantastic. So if I draw this, So guys, what is the FEV1? We'll do FEV1 first, and then the FVC ratio. Fantastic, excellent. So what is FEV1, guys? What is FEV1? I was trying to aim for three, to be honest. Yeah, three, fantastic. So your FEV1, I know my drawing isn't the best. I have a lot of skills, guys, but I'm sorry, my drawing is pretty tragic. So your FEV1 is three, and then your FVC, which is your highest, what you can breathe, is five, because the line is highest at five. So three divided by five is not 0.6. So does this patient have COPD? Yeah, to do because it's under 0 0.7. So under 0 0.7 means COPD. So FEV1 is one second, three liters. FVC is five, the highest point. Three because it's in one second. I think everyone's with us now. Excellent. They have, they've been COPD. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. 
good stuff, guys. So everyone understands it now. If you do, guys, just give me a three. Just give me a three. Just give me a three. Amazing, amazing, amazing. What about something like this? So... Something like that. So what would be what would the FBC be for this one? Uh, the ratio will be for that one. So I'm trying to put the FEV one. I'm trying to get yes, excellent. Everyone's got it. Everyone's got it. So the FEV one is two, and then the FVC is four. Two divided by four is no point five. It really is as simple as that, guys. Boom, 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 boom. It really is as simple as that, guys. Honestly, you don't need to complicate it any more than that. You look at the one second mark, you look at the highest line on the thing, one divided by the other, you got your FBC, you got your, you got your ratio. It can't be 1.5, it has to be underneath the zero. It just can't be 1.5. I'm not sure you've gone wrong. But please use that as an example. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, a piece of cake. All oh, the best training pharmacists ever. You got me thinking about cake now, my friend. Oh, what kind of cake would you guys go for? What kind of cake would you guys go for? I just, chocolate fudge, real bed, red. Oh my goodness. My head's starting to spin, guys. I'm not sure if I can do a seminar or not anymore, to be honest. My head's just spinning. I just, chocolate fudge. Yeah, chocolate fudge. I like it. I like it. I like chocolate. Tres, like, oh my goodness, you're killing me. You're killing me. You're killing me. Guys, make sure you finish the exam and then you have to go and get some cake afterwards and celebrate and treat yourselves as well because that's very, very important. Cake has the next prize, next seminar. <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> Only parts of people who have got cake. That's brilliant. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm not sure about cake shipping, but uh, me and Marvin will try to get more cake at the pharmacy show. So that's in October. It's in Birmingham. So definitely come by, definitely say hello, and then have some cake as well, if there's any left. If Marvin hasn't finished it all off by himself, because that guy eats like there's no tomorrow. So the, <laughs> so the ratio is not 0.5 for that one. So many freebies, definitely go to the pharmacy show. We have a stand there. Is it H2 or not H5? I don't know. But we're going to the pharmacy show this year in October. We're going to the CPC in Manchester in November. And then we're going to the one next year in London as well. So it's going to be really, really great. Exams in Newcastle style planning to stay behind. Newcastle is a really great city. I lived there for a teeny bit. Very, very cool place, definitely. There we go, guys. I had a few messages before and I was getting requests for questions. So who is ready for questions, guys? If you're ready, just give me a one. Just give me a one. Just give me a one. So this question, you have to use all the information that we've learned and then you've got to put the patient in the right category as well. Everyone's, everyone's on fire today. Everyone's on fire today. Fantastic. So guys, no timers. We'll just do it together. So let's do this question together. Excellent, guys. When you get your answer, you can just type it in. There's no timers or anything. We're just doing that as a group exercise. A, lots of A's, lots of A's, lots of A's. Maria, question mark. You know I don't like question marks. If you put down an answer, you have to believe that's the answer. You have to believe, believe, believe it's the answer. That's the way you pass the exam. Is, 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 lots of is. I believe it's a, I can fly. Well, I actually can't, but it would be pretty cool if I could. But if I could, I wouldn't be here right now. So gold grade has nothing to say precisely. Is this a stupid question, but where is group C and D on the tool? They used to be, but they removed it. They removed they removed C and D, they made it A, B and E, they made it much easier. 
I just couldn't put three options, so I put down C and D for the sake of it, just because, well, why not? But it's much easier now than what it used to be. Fantastic. So, guys, with this question, the answer is definitely A. A, it's definitely A, because you have to use the figures that are on and inside the question. Your ratio is 60%. That's not really that important, to be honest, because you're trying to figure this part out. So the cat score, it is the MRC is one. So that fits this category. And the cat score is eight. So that fits this category. They are yet to be hospitalized with an exacerbation. So they haven't had an exacerbation yet. So that means it's this category here. So what does this match? It matches this, it matches this. So the answer is group A. It's A, everyone. A, it's A, it's A, it is A. So the answer is A for this question. Boom, 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 boom. Are we supposed to know about inhalers? We haven't done inhalers yet. I will talk about inhalers soon. There's no point talking about inhalers now and then talking about it again afterwards. We cover inhalers, we will talk about it soon. Fantastic. So that's pretty much it, guys. You just have to look at the figures match them with the information here. You match them with the FEV1 ratio if they ask it, with the gold grade if they ask it, with the MRC, with the cap. You just match all of that, pretty much from into A, B, or E. And that's it, guys. That, that's honestly it. That is honestly it. So is that all now a little bit clearer than before? If it is, guys, just give me a three, just give me a three, just give me a three. Simple one, two, three, that is it. Guys, I keep getting asked if you get an exam or not. You'll get it in the exam. You're not supposed to know stuff by heart. They're testing your knowledge if you can use a resource or not. So they will definitely give you the resource in the exam. Have I thrown away the salmon yet? Um, do you know what? It's the craziest part. Is I, I lived in Glasgow at that time. I've since moved to Sheffield. I know it's a temporary move, but I've since moved to, she I've since moved to Sheffield for a bit. I still have the salmon in my freezer. Um, it's not in a good condition though. It's just, yeah, I wouldn't want to eat it now, but the salmon lives on. The salmon definitely lives on. How have your family not killed it? <laughs> I don't know either. I don't know, but it's part of the family. I just, honestly, it's, uh, it's that bad now that I can't even take it out of the fridge and show you that's how bad it is. It's actually unsafe. You might actually get one or two, I might actually manage to get one or two of you like, I do you know. Honestly, it's unreal. Take a picture. If I find it, if I if I can find it, then I will I will I will show you. But my but my wife said that I am not allowed to ever show that on a webinar ever again. It's really bad. It's really bad. Yeah, it's pretty much yeah, it's really bad. Yeah, she said that she said that I am not allowed to show it's that bad and she said it's disgusting. And this woman sees bloody legs all the time and bloody all sorts. So she said that was worse with the disc with the with the with the fish. <laughs> Red flag. I like salmon. <laughs> oh, Mr. Fish, Mr. Fish and respiratory. I'll try uh, you know what? We've got some webinars coming up. When she's not at home, I'll pull it out and I'll show it to you. It'll, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Good stuff. So guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, group A, B, C, D, or E. Who is ready to discuss treatments? If you are, just give me a three, just give me a three, just give me a three. So we've learned about the gold ABE assessment tool. So we are now gonna move forward on to treatments, which is most likely what they will test you about in that exam. And that's pretty much it, guys. That is pretty much it. So it's based on your AMRC and CAT. It's based on your exacerbation. If you're group A, you get a bronchodilator. If you're group B, you get a LABA and a LAMA. And then if you're group E, you get a LABA and a LAMA as well. Now I'm getting a few messages saying, do we need to know this? I would say, I would earn the side of caution and say you're best off learning it instead. It's not much. A, bronchodilator, B, LABA and LAMA, C, C is LABA, LAMA, and that's pretty much it. That's, uh, and, and ICS. So they'll give that to you, the they'll, they'll most likely give that to you in the exam, but I'm gonna be 100% honest and say that 
I'm not 100% sure if you need to know this off by heart, this part here. So you are best off learning it. But if you give it to an exam, then that's fine as well. So yeah, pretty much it. So EOS, I know I'm getting some messages. EOS is blood isinophils. So if, you are, if your isinophils are high, then you are responsive to corticosteroids. So if you have a low isinophil, then you don't really respond to corticosteroids. So there's no real point in giving you corticosteroid for the sake of it. If you've learned something new there, if you have learned something new, just give me a three, just give me a three, just give me a three, fantastic. I saw a question about which labber, and we'll talk about that in the next slide as well. But yeah, guys, with this, it's pretty much based on their group A, B, or E. A, they get a bronchodilator, B, they get a labber and a lama, and then group E, they get a labber, lama, and an ICS if their EOS is over 300. Again, I think they'll give that to you in the exam. The reason why they have a star is because they want you to give a single inhaler. So they want, they, they want a combination of lava and a lama in an inhaler. Yeah, so patient has to be in A, B, or E. They can't be A and B, or they can't be A and E. They are A, B, or E. Only, only one category. What if EOS is under 300? I think you guys have already seen the slides. I just, we're going to cover that soon. We'll cover it soon. Who wants to learn about what happens if the EUS is under 300? If you do, just type a one, just type a one, just type a one. Let's do it, people. Let's do it. So that is an example of all the inhalers. That can be found on the Gold website. I can send that on the group afterwards as well. So you have a long-acting beta agonist. You've got your short-acting, most green eggs, the long-acting. You've got all different kinds of inhalers. That is quite a useful thing to know. With COPD, they sort of tend to give for more trouble because it can be used for short term, but it can also be used for long term as well. So Famotro and Selmetrol is what they tend to give for COPD. You don't need to know all the brands for your exam, but if you're looking in the community, you kind of need to know their brands, to be honest, because you're going to be a pharmacist in August, right? And you're going to get to work and someone's going to say, oh, well, what's uh, what's these ingredients? And then there's different brands and then you just like, if you don't know, you might look like you don't know what you're doing. So it's good to learn the brands. It's definitely good to know them. It feels like a lot, but honestly it, it is. And you'll get used to it in no time. Fantastic guys, let's go back just one second. So that is a table with lots of inhalers. Titropium isn't used for COPD. And um, titropium is used for COPD and asthma. Fantastic. So guys, let's talk about EOS under 300. So this is, you will get this in the exam. Give in the exam. I know my writing is tragic, guys, but I don't know how I can make it any clearer than that. You will get that in the exam. You will then have to figure out from the question if it is dyspenia or if it's exacerbations. And then you'll need to calculate the best treatment plan, the, the best treatment plan for this patient. You said tritropium is asthma, only inhaler for asthma. But foster, does foster have does foster have glycoperonium in it? Does it? No, 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 foster, foster doesn't. No, foster doesn't. No. So let's focus on what we have here. So let's do an example of a question. So my uh, situation is that I have had two exacerbations. My blood eosinophils is 400 and I used to smoke as well. So what is the best treatment plan for me, guys? So what would you, what would you recommend for me? From the table, what would you recommend for me? Fantastic. So you would recommend a labber, a lama, an ICS, because my xenophils are over 300. And because I used to smoke as well, I would also get a dithromycin. Fantastic. I'm loving it. Let's make it a bit more complicated. So 
what if my blood eosinophils were less than 100 and I had loads of exacerbations and my FEV1 was like 30%, then what would I get? Fantastic. I would get a lava and a llama and rofflumilast. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Everyone is smashing this. So you're going to get information in the question. You then have to use that with this table and then get to the right place and then choose the correct option in the question, whether it be A, B, C, D, or E. Then get the question right. And that's it, guys. That's all you got to do. Is that a bit clear now, guys? If it is, just type a three, just type a three, just type a three, just type a three, just type a three. I had, I've, I'm still getting questions about if do I have to learn this thing. It's, it's in the exam. It's in the exam. It's on the slide. It's in the exam. They want to test that. That's what they want. That's what they want to test. It's good to learn stuff, but they, they, I can't see them hiding that from you. And anyone who did the exam in November 2022 they will also mention that this was in the exam. Besides, Tammy, Tammy saved this day, Tammy put down that this exact slide came up in the exam. So this is what they will ask you. This will come up in the exam. So fantastic. We've got another question, guys. Let's do it together. What's our answer? What's our answer for this one? I love it. I love it, guys. You guys are smashing this. See, what was what was the worry, guys? You're absolutely smashing this. The answer is E because the patient, the patient is this. Well, this is what happens to them. They're hospitalized for the third time. That means they have exacerbations. So this part is what you look under. If you get this uh, table in the exam and you get this question, if it says exacerbations, you look at exacerbations, no dyspnea. You, know, you don't look at that. So then what you do, the treatment plan currently includes salbutamol and thiotropin, so you know that is what they're currently on. They're trying to stop smoking. Their xenophils are 350, and the FEV1 is 60%, so that's more than 50. So it's, you give that, and then you give it the mycin. So they end up with a lava and the llama and ICS and azithromycin. So is that a bit clearer now, guys? If it is, just type on E, just type on E. Hey, good stuff, guys. Fantastic. Loving it, 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 loving it. I saw a question, but somebody was on today. The questions go flying by. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Raflumilast is given when FEV1 is under 50 percent and chronic bronchitis is present or would it be present when one of um is being made it's both so you'd have to fit both but if someone has an fev1 of under 50 they most likely will have some sort of chronic bronchitis so that's why they end up getting off luminosity fantastic is that a bit clearer now guys if it is clearer just give me a four just give me a four just give me a four because I am loving this session with you guys. I missed it. I missed it. We're going to have a lot more of these going forward. Good stuff, guys. We have examples of questions. I know, I know questions always reinforce learning. So I hope you found that useful. Would they ask a question like this? This is easy. This is pretty much how they ask it. Anyone that, anyone that did the exam in November can confirm. This is pretty much what they ask. All you want to do is check that you guys can read the resource, understand the information, and then use the information, and then choose the right option. Because that is what you'll be doing as a pharmacist. So you always give ABX and exacerbations. Are we going to get a dust? I can't answer that question. That's not top. That's not on board with the current topic. That's completely, that's completely off topic. Our gold guidelines, first line for COPD. 
Uh, they they they're most likely going to be one day soon, to be honest. But they will make it clear to you in the exam if they are you on the goal guidelines or if they want you to use the nice guidelines. Goal is more American, that's it. Goal guidelines probably are a bit better, to be honest. But they, it's American, that's it. I have a question about smoking and then not smoking and then the time period. That's very specialized, guys. They wouldn't really mess you around like that. They want to see if you can use the information that's in front of you. Remember, you're not a spiritual specialist. You are training pharmacists that are going to the exam in June or November and be a first day pharmacist soon. So I think I don't want you to read too much into it as well, basically. What's the difference between C and E? C is ICS, E is azithromycin. Azithromycin is because they have tried to stop smoking. So azithromycin is given preferentially in former smokers. This has been a great session. Temi, Temi, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love that you found it useful. So from the GPHC, they make it very, very clear in the question. See, because you know, if it's, if it's ambiguous, right, then what do you choose? Some of us will choose A, B, C, D, or E. No one will know what's going on and they'll have to chalk off the question. So that is why they have to make it very, very clear. Man, John, I missed you too. I missed the whole group. It's going to be difficult, but I promise you it's going to be worth it. And when this comes up in the exam, we'll look back and you'll be there like, you know what? I'm glad I turned up and it was useful. And I got the mark and I've got the extra marks that I needed to smash the exam. Hopefully it's an extended matching one. That's it. I like it. I like it. I like it. I love the energy. You face your worst fears, guys. I promise you everything is going to be fine. If you just do the same stuff all the time, you're not going to change or evolve or grow. You do the same stuff all the time. A uh, quick question about recording. Yes, it will be given. Uh, I keep getting messages about emails. My admin team will look into it. Where is smoking on the chart? Smoking will be in the question, so they will tell you if a patient, they will tell you if a patient is smoking or not. Fantastic. Exactly now, guys, if it is, just give me a three, chapter three, chapter three. We are smashing chapter three today. Fantastic. So, guys, this is just some more information. I don't really think you need to know this, but the slides are a bit thin, so I thought I'd add it in. Plus, I get a few more minutes with you guys because of the most amazing and best group. So pretty much what it is, is A or B, it's a group B and E, they get pulmonary rehabilitation. That's pretty much it. And then COPD patients, as we know, they get vaccinated as well. Flu, pneumococcal, shingles, the whole nine yards. But you can learn more about that in the combo course in chapter 14 in the vaccines webinar that I do as well. But that's pretty much it, honestly. That's pretty much it. So severity exacerbations. I will talk a little bit about this. So this is basically a scale. You've got this beanie of VAS. That's like a visual scale analog. It's, not, it's zero, to, zero to 10. You've got RR, that's respiratory rate. You've got HR, that's heart rate. SAO2, that's oxygen saturation. And then CRP, C-reactive protein. They, if that comes up in the exam, all you've pretty much got to do is use the figures that you get in the question and then place the patient under either mild, moderate, or severe. That's it, guys. That's all you have to do. I don't see that coming up, but I've added it in for the sake of adding it in. But you get the numbers from the thing, you match it with the correct section, mild, moderate, or severe, and that's it, guys. Easy peasy, Japanese. Can you move forward, guys? If you can, give me a three. Just give me a three. Just give me a three. Lovely stuff. Amazing. Lovely, lovely stuff. So, guys, some examples of medications used to reduce number of exacerbations in COPD. That is a main goal of C treatments in COPD. You want to reduce number of exacerbations. So, you've got some bronchodilators. Uh, you've got LABA, LAMA, or LABA and LAMA. So this is the main difference between gold and nice guidance. Um, bron bronchodilators covers LABA, LABA, uh, LABA and LAMA are all the combination. 
Whereas in nice guidance, which I teach in the combo course, that's more the llamas are like anti muscarinics and stuff like that. So they've categorized it nicer here. You then got a cortical core, cortical cell regimen. So lava and ICS or lava, lama and an ICS. So if it's got an ICS, it comes under cortical cell regimen. The anti-inflammatory, so low fluminase, the anti-infective, so you've got vaccines, uh, azithromycin is an antibiotic. So that's an antibiotic that it comes on the anti-infective. You can regulate so you've got acetylcysteine, carbocysteine, adostine, and then other measures, so stop smoking, um, shielding, so COPD patients. If anyone knows any COPD patients uh, that were in COVID, I know I knew a few. They were shielding in COVID to avoid getting uh, infections and risking exacerbations, and then pulmonary rehab as well. A little bit of a summary chart discussing treatments, inhalers, ICS, inflammatories, infective, and mucoregulators. Well, Boris was party, Jesus Christ. Yeah, pretty much. I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what to say. The whole thing's a riot. So bad. Uh yeah. Right. Azithromycin. Azithromycin is 500 three times V prophylaxis. Um, you should know this from your infections chapter. The infections chapter is highly weighted, so you have to learn that from the infections chapter. So who can confirm the dose for azithromycin? when they are taking it for prophylaxis. When, when patients are taking azithromycin for prophylaxis, what is the dose, guys? 500 micrograms when? How many? It's 253 times, it, it, it's, uh, it's 253 times a week, guys. So uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Fantastic. That's really good. That, guys, is just a follow-up checklist. So that's, it just discusses everyone, their date of birth, diagnosis. It pretty much covers everything. Uh, the AMRC, um, the symptoms. Uh, discusses what the action plan is. You don't need to know that. I, I just I, I just thought it was nice, so I just thought I'd shove it into the slides, and that's pretty much it. Fantastic, guys. That is it for today's session, but don't go just yet because we've got some freebies. If you love today's webinar and found it useful, if you are going to smash the gold COPD guidance in the exam, type a yes. It's us me. This chat is going crazy, guys. Yes. You're going to smash this exam. You're going to smash it. I believe in you, Marvin believes in you, we wouldn't be doing this and supporting you year in, year out if we didn't believe in you. The thing is though, guys, I'm not going to be sat next to you in the exam. You're going to be sat there yourself. So you have to believe in yourself, guys. We believe in you, we really do. You wouldn't be here if you were not good enough to do this. So you have to believe in yourself. Promise me you'll believe in yourself and every single thing will be okay. I love the session, guys. I'm looking forward and I'm hoping that we can have a few more and it's going to be really, 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 really good. So guys, who is ready for the raffle? My God, the chat is going crazy. I'm going to actually turn it off and pick a winner at random. So we're going to get two lucky winners on our foundation program. Now, if you're not on the combo course already, I will add you on until the June exam only. If you are on the combo course, then you get your money back. So you get a free combo course. How about that? Does that sound good, guys? If it does, it's type for yes, yes. I can't keep up with the chat anymore, guys. If I miss any messages, apologies, but I really can't keep up with this anymore. Let's have a look, see. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at what's going on. <laughs> There's like a one in that. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. So stuff, guys. So our first winner is, see, it's actually random. There's no favorites here. So it's actually random. So let's see. Our first winner is. Our first winner is Maria Mahmoud. Maria Mahmoud. Maria Mahmoud, you are on the combo course, my friend. So you need to send this email address, please. And just say you're from the webinar and that you want a space in the combo course. So Maria Mahmoud, you are on the combo course, my friend. Fantastic. Who wants another one, guys? Shall we do it? Shall we do another one? Shall we do another one? 
If you want another one, yes, let's do another one. Let's do another one. Fantastic. Let's do another one. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's pick another one. Fariba Atari. Fariba, Fariba, you are on the combo course as well. Fariba, fantastic. Fariba, um, email this email address. I will sort it for you. I won't see your message in the chat. I know it's going to get too hectic. So Fariba, you are on the combo course. If you're, I don't recognize the name from the course itself. So if you're doing the exam, then I can give you access until the June exam. Fantastic, guys. That, that Guys, that is our two winners. That's our two winners for today. And uh, let's do one more. That's the beauty of being the boss. Let's do one more. Who wants one more? Yeah, let's do one more. What's the point in being the boss man when you can't even choose how many raffles you want to do? Let's do let's do one more raffle. This is definitely the last one though, guys. Our last winner is our last winner is. Anika Farouk, Anika, you are in the combo course as well until the June exam. Congratulations. We have had the most amazing webinar today, guys. I hope you've really found it useful for your exam. I know there's a month to go and I know that it's a very, very stressful time. I hope you found it really useful. Please keep working hard. Please keep working smart. Remember, guys, don't burn yourselves out. Please also take a bit of time off for yourselves as well. It's really, really important. It's going to be really, really great. I know it's a stressful time. Please keep working. And I promise you, when you pass the exam, you'll realize at that moment in time that everything that you're going through, it was definitely, definitely worth it. Guys, I hope you have a nice night. I hope you, if you're working tomorrow, a good day with tomorrow as well. I know some of us still haven't eaten, so please get some food inside you. Thank you, everyone. You've been amazing today. Your energy is always inspiring. Please use that energy and smash that exam. I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Bye.